I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice late Victorian table. I say late Victorian, I mean like 1890s. I've seen a lot of furniture from that period that's made out of cherry or birch, uh, stained dark. Now, this kind of sunburst pattern is very common to that era. I call this table a campaign table because that's an interesting feature in that it comes apart. Ready to travel. I'm hoping that I can clean the base and restore that finish. The top has completely come apart at every joint. I need to remove that, re-glue it, and refinish it. You know, because there's so much uh, blackness on these joints, and it, I don't know if it's mold, but it kind of looks like mold or could be mold, so I'm going to wash these with a bleach solution. Now, I'm going to use regular glue for this glue up, although I like to use hide glue for antiques. I need a much longer working time that I can get with this uh, yellow glue. You can see, I wasn't. Uh, I, obviously, these are lousy joints. I couldn't run them through the joint, or I'd lose too much wood. There were so many, <clears throat> but I wasn't really prepared for how hard it would be to get them to come together on the ends. Um, but I think it's going to be all right. This, uh, this came out really well, especially considering the uh, kind of frantic glue up yesterday. So, uh, why am I scraping this top and not sanding it? You know, I have uh, belt sanders, I have tons of pneumatic sanders, but what I'm hoping for is to, just to scrape this top. I'll lightly sand it when I'm done with some 220. Uh, but I don't want this tabletop to necessarily be perfectly flat. Uh, I'm not going to put texture in on purpose, but I'm just using a scraper. If there's a little bit of texture or a little bit of unflatness, that's fine. So I was going after uh, specific spots with the card scraper, but now it's sort of I want to go over the whole top and even it out, and so I'll use the uh, Stanley number no. eighty.
this uh, end grain is going to be the toughest part to sand. sanded the edges, scraped the top. There's some dark uh, dark stains here, and so I'm going to treat this with oxalic acid. I haven't really uh, measured out too carefully. I'm going to give a, a, a few good scoops to maybe a quart of water, hot water. So while this dries, I'm going to clean the base. I want to get an idea of uh, what color we're going for here. Okay, it's dry now, and I'm going to uh, sand it with 220 by hand. Okay, I've sanded this whole top with 220, including the edges. So now I want to stain it. Even originally, these pieces were done with uh, uh, dye stain. Uh, that's why you can never really get the stain out, and I don't want to anyway. So I have a dye stain here. Uh, it's made to spray. It's walnut dye stain, probably uh, acetone or something like that. I'm going to thin it out with some a lot of uh, lacquer retarder to see if I can slow it down enough so that I can pat it. I need to add uh, more stain. Okay, the stain is dried now, so uh, it looks a lot lighter than it did when I stained it, but uh, I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to give it a coat of this tongue oil varnish. I don't think you could see it, but they, when I was putting on the coat, there were areas that it seemed like it wanted to fish eye. In other words, it seemed like there were areas that were resisting the finish and it was kind of making craters. But as I kept tipping this off, it stays wet for a long time, I kept tipping it off and uh, those areas seemed to have disappeared. So I hope it dries just like this. We'll find out tomorrow. So this top, uh, this top looks good. Uh, the color is, it, it is great, but it's a little light, which is good. Uh, the next thing, what I need to do to figure out my color on this top is get a coat of the uh, tongue oil varnish uh, on the base here. So when I cleaned this, I scrubbed it really well with uh, Scotch-Brite pad, and I don't think I need to do anything to it now. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll go over it to shiny areas here. Maybe I'll go over this a little bit more with the Scotch-Brite pad, and then I'll just brush on a coat. So even though when I was washing this I was finding paint spots and they were coming off, I still find everywhere stupid paint. So what I'm going to do here is I put a little bit of this uh, goof off product in a container and then with a 3M pad that seems to take the paint right off. You know, the, uh, 
the legs are really dark, but uh, um, this color I'm seeing on the apron here, which is very similar to the color on the top that I have now, uh, I think that's I think that's going to be the color I'm going to go for right there. Okay, so it's obvious the top is a little light. That's going to be fine. I'm going to uh, sand this top and go over it with a scotch bright pad. And then I'm going to glaze it with some asphaltum glaze. Alright, uh, glazing with asphaltum is just like glazing with anything else. Uh, you got your glaze and you uh, want to have a rag handy and two brushes, one to apply and one which I will call a dry brush to sort of even it out if you need to. You can see that I'm not trying to wipe it all off. In fact, I'm making a pad trying to leave a little on here. I want that color. And now I'll take my dry brush and I, I want to leave a little more on the edges and I want to leave a little more on the edge molding. All right, let this dry overnight. Okay, the asphaltum glaze has uh, dried overnight. This looks good. It's really hard to tell in when, it's, when it's flashed off like this. But here's the base, and I want to put this top on the base very gingerly because this is just sitting there. I took the hardware off so it's not attached. So this looks good, at least at first glance. Won't know for sure until I put the next coat on this. It appears that the edge blends in with the apron really, really well. And if the top's a little bit lighter, that's what I want. Uh, I've noticed that almost all antiques, they're darker at the bottom, and they get lighter as they come up, and the top is usually the lightest part of all. All right, I'm going to put a coat of gloss on the top. You know, going into this, I thought for sure I was going to have to add color to the finish. Uh, you know, put some stain in the top coats, but right now it doesn't look like I need to. So I'm going to give this a coat of the gloss finish and the apron another coat. No, I'm really, uh, I'm really liking this color a lot. I think this will be good. Uh, hopefully, I'll just need one more coat. It's always good at some point during the process to flip these things over and just give a quick coat to the underside and uh, like this apron. Uh, I'm not going to coat these boards. I'm not going to coat the board where the stencil is, but I just want to make this a little bit neater. Okay, everything's uh, looking good here. The tabletop dried fine. I think it uh, just needs one more coat. Everything just needs one more coat. But before I do that final coat, I want to do some assembly work. I want to assemble the top uh, onto the apron, which of course means I've got to uh, address this hardware. I've got to clean this hardware up. There are also casters on this table. I, don't, I may not have mentioned that in the introduction because they weren't on the table. But I have these casters. So I'm going to clean these up, uh, especially these, and get them uh, installed on this uh, apron frame. You know, I thought that these brackets were just iron, and I was going to clean them off on the lathe with a wire wheel. And then I noticed this little glint. I think these uh, maybe were bronze plated or something. So I'm just going to clean them off with uh, this uh, metal cleaner. I tried it a little bit, and it seems to bring it back somewhat. Uh, these are stamped with a patent also. And it does say 1887, same as the table itself. Now I want to uh, screw this top, uh, screw this apron to the top. But you'll notice that the boards they use run perpendicular to the grain of the top, uh, not really allowing for a lot of wood movement. So I'm going to take a drill and ream these holes a little bit back and forth in the direction of the wood movement to allow the screws to move with the wood. So now you can see that the hole is elongated and the screw now can move back and forth. Hopefully enough to 
accommodate any wood movement. And, uh, you know, I'm tightening the screws, you know, so that they're snug, but I'm not cranking them down and not making them too tight because I want them to be able to move if necessary. So I might as well uh, sand this apron before I flip it over and sand the top. I'm going to sand the flats a little bit with 320, but then go after it with a Scotch-Brite gray pad. Uh, same treatment on the top, but I'm going to sand with 500 and then the gray pad. Now you always want to sand with as fine as grit as will do the job. So with the 500, you know, obviously it's not uh, very coarse sandpaper, and so it's cutting back the finish a bit, uh, getting rid of all the nits and uh, any other things, but I'm not trying to make this perfect by any means. Uh, this feels great, nice and smooth. Now I'll go over the edges with the gray pad, and then I'll go over the top with the gray pad too. And then I'll have a good idea of, of uh, what it's going to be like when I put the final coat on. See, I'm going after these shiny areas. I'm not trying to make them go away entirely, but I'm definitely cutting them back a bit. Now I'm going to uh, just wipe this down with this uh, product. It's called a wax wash remover. It's, uh, it's paint thinner. It must have other stuff in it too that's designed to remove contaminants from the wood. And I don't suspect I have any particular contaminants here, but I've gotten a habit of uh, wiping down with this anyway. Uh, I think it really helps to get a really good final coat. Now while that's drying, I'll go over the base uh, just with a, a gray pad. Now for the final coat, I'll use uh, satin. So, uh, everything's looking really good here. So it has uh, like, like little nits in the top. And then other than that, I think I just need to uh, steel wool it with some polish. But before I do anything and reassemble this, uh, I didn't yet uh, uh, do the wheels. And they appear just to be, you know, iron wheels or steel wheels, and I will clean them off uh, with a wire wheel on the lathe. So this is such a slow drying finish that you're bound to get little nits in it. As I feel across here, I can just feel an even distribution of little nits. So I've got a piece of craft paper here, you know, like think of a, a brown paper bag. And I'll just take this paper and go over the top. Yeah, that's taking care of those nits. And it doesn't change the sheen. These legs feel fine, but I'll just go over them quickly with the paper anyway. It gives them that really smooth feel. So now I'm just going to go over this top uh, kind of lightly with some 4 aught steel wool and the uh, orange oil beeswax polish here. Now, I'm not applying uh, a lot of pressure or anything. I'm just really going over very lightly. Uh, the top was already smooth, and uh, this is just sort of giving it that little extra.
we go. Nice little uh, late Victorian campaign table, uh, 1890s, in fact the patent date of 1887 on this table. It's a campaign table because the legs are easily removable uh, with no tools, yet it's remarkably sturdy. It's completely sturdy. It's a good, uh, good design. And of course, this tabletop desperately needed to be refinished, but I scraped it by hand, uh, brushed on the finish, I think it looks pretty good.